Hello and welcome uh, to this Community Education on Temporomandibular Joint Disorder presentation. I'm Andrew Gaitano, I'm a physical therapist, and I've spent about the past 10 years trying to improve my skill set and knowledge on this disorder, knowing that it's a very underserved population and lots of people struggle with this, maybe don't know what to do with it. So hopefully I can give you some answers on that and you can get on your road to recovery. Um, goals of this presentation, uh, I want to keep this brief. But I, I, also, I want you to understand the basics of TMJ anatomy and the role of your neck and posture in that. Um, appreciate and maybe even feel what normal movement of the jaw feels like. Um, explore the symptoms of temporal mandibular joint disorder, how it's diagnosed. Um, review daily, daily habits that you can create that can assist in preventing temporal mandibular joint disorder. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll understand why physical therapy should be the first choice of treatment uh, for those suffering with this. A little bit about me, I'm originally from Mechanicville, New York, uh, upstate New York. I graduated from Ithaca College. Um, I have some certifications. I'm board certified in orthopedic physical therapy and neurologic physical therapy, as well as being manual therapy certified. Um, I've been teaching at Russell Sage College for the past 12 years or so, and that includes um, anatomy, cadaver dissections, as well as neuroscience. Um, in addition to that, I'm uh, co-owner of Capital Area Physical Therapy and Wellness, and I treat patients there. Um, I would say right now about half of my caseload is TMJ problems and TM, TMJ dysfunction. Um, so a little bit about the temporomandibular joint. Uh, the temporomandibular joint, or TMJ, is a hinge joint. It's a, it's a classification type of joint that is in front of your ear, connects your jawbone, which is your mandible, to your skull which is your temporal bone, thus TMJ, temporal mandibular joint. Um, TMJ functions to open and close the mouth and move the jaw from side to side and front to back. That allows you to chew, swallow, and talk. So um, one important thing that I'm going to uh, briefly talk on um, is it's, it's easy to think that your jaw just sort of goes up and down like this and that makes you chew and talk. It's not the way the jaw works. There's other component motions of the jaw that allow it to be healthy and allow it to be normal. Um, so we'll talk about that briefly in, in a minute. Um, there are four muscles on each side that have a direct influence on the TMJ. You can see two of them here. This is called the masseter, and this is the temporalis. Um, you can see the fiber direction here of both of these muscles. Uh, both of these muscles job is to bring the mandible closer to um, the skull, thus forcibly, force, forcibly closing the mandible. Uh, those are palpable from the outside. You can feel if you go above your cheekbone, um, just above your ear and to the front of it, the temporalis muscle. If you bite down a little bit gently, you can feel it pop in your finger. If you go down below your cheekbone, below this bone right here, and um, do the same thing. This is a much more palpable muscle. The masseter is a, it's a much larger and much more powerful muscle. So if you bite down, you'll feel it pop into your finger. So that's where those two muscles are. On the inside of the jaw, there are two other muscles and those are wing shaped. So um, they get the name pterygoid as in pterodactyl because of their wing shaped muscles. And there's two of them. Um, there's a lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid. These muscles are not palpable from the outside. We palpate them from the inside of the mouth. And their main role is side to side motion like this. In addition to the muscles, um, the TMJ, the temporomandibular joint itself, is, is a specialized joint. It's, it's dissimilar from other joints in our body for several reasons. Um, but one of them is, if you follow the laser here, this is a zoomed in view of the jaw from the left. So we're looking at the left side and we have sort of shaved down some of the bones so we can see uh, the actual contents of this joint here. And if you look at this tissue, there is a specialized cushion in the, within the jaw called the articular disc. And this is an important structure of the jaw for how often we use the jaw, for, for how frequent it is being quote unquote traumatized, that articular disc is, plays a very important role in stabilizing and cushioning and, and distributing the forces that come along with that. 
Um, so some of the dysfunction that occurs with jaw issues stems from the inability of the articular disc to do that. And so um, one of the first things I'll say is if your jaw is making sounds, it's not a normal jaw. Uh, normal jaws do not make sounds. Here's what normal motion looks like. And you can palpate this and feel this yourself. If you feel the jaw right in front of your ear and you take your tongue and make suction motion in your mouth until your tongue sticks to the roof of your mouth. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth and open. If you don't allow your tongue to, 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 to come off of the roof of your mouth, the first thing you're feeling there is you're feeling the mandible rolling in space. That's about half or 50% of our opening of our jaw. That's an important motion. If we don't have that um, component motion of the jaw, issues shortly follow. If you take the tongue then away from the roof of your mouth and you fully open, you'll notice there's a different motion that comes along with that. It's actually a translation. So first 50% or so of motion rolling, take the tongue away. The last 50% is a translation. So both of those are important, um, important components of normal jaw opening. Like I said earlier, deviation from one side to the other is also an important component of jaw opening. So if you look at in, in a mirror or um, through your camera, how far you can move to the left, how far you can move to the right, both of those motions are really important. And if there's an asymmetry there, um, that can be an issue. The last way the jaw can move is in protrusion and retraction. Okay, so this is the bottom teeth moving forward. And backward. Okay, so normal jaw opening has a four to one to one ratio of those motions, meaning for every four millimeters of opening we have, we should have one millimeter of deviation and one millimeter of protrusion. And so normal opening is about 40 millimeters itself, which is about the width of three of your fingers. So if you can fit three fingers in your mouth, you probably have that 40 millimeters of opening, but that doesn't necessarily mean that is normal and healthy opening because if you're missing side to side deviation, which should be about 10 degrees in each direction or 10 degrees of protrusion, um, we're basically forcing that jaw to be open, op to be open without the, without its helpers, without its, the normal mobility of those other component motions. So, that's one way we assess norm normalcy of the jaw. Uh, normal movement also includes a healthy bite. And so what should happen is as you gently tap your teeth together, the top teeth should sit gently over the bottom teeth. Um, malocclusion occurs with uh, that motion being excessive in one direction, either too far forward or on top or behind. And so there's different classes of, of malocclusion. Um, now, one thing I want to say, and especially to any dentists uh, watching this, and that is I don't do anything with the teeth. Um, the teeth has full, the, the dentists have full jurisdiction with the teeth and with bite. The only thing I, 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 I mess with when physical therapy is um, things that mess with the bite that are not teeth related. And that includes posture, that includes muscle, the tension, uh, and that includes the way the neck moves. Now, one example I like to give on that is if you gently tap your teeth together with your with yourself sitting up nice and tall, get a sense of the quality, where things are touching, and the sound, and then do the same thing with really kind of poor posture where you, where you round your shoulders, you stick your head out. And you'll likely notice that that in itself has changed the, the actual bite um, of your mouth. And so that's one way jaw issues can be stemmed from uh, postural issues or neck issues. Um, one thing I like to say to patients is you probably have never thought about where your tongue is in your mouth um, until I just said that, but it's always in there. Think to yourself right now, is it to the left? Is it to the right? Is it down? Is it up? Is it twisted? Is it forward? Generally speaking, at rest, when we're not chewing, we're not talking, we're not manipulating food, our tongue should be stuck to the roof of our mouth. 
not just the tip, but the entirety of the tongue um, with the teeth slightly open. Teeth should never be touching anything unless we're chewing. That's a good general rule. Um, and with neck movement, generally speaking, a good way to screen this is turn your head all the way to the right, turn your head all the way to the left. Are they symmetrical? Can you look over your shoulder um, without having to turn your body, strain, hold your breath, um, any, any weird compensatory motions? Um, and lastly, you should be able to bring your chin down to your chest and your head up toward the ceiling so that it's uh, parallel with the, with the ceiling. All of those things are normal and um, necessary things for the health of the jaw. Temporal and mandibular joint dysfunction occurs um, when one or several of those things go wrong. And so this is a very common condition. Um, it's, it's a condition that affects um, women more than men, especially women in, in childbearing age. Um, however, I've seen kids with this problem and I've seen people of, of, of all ages with this issue as well. So it's not exclusive to that population. Um, symptoms of TMJ may include, of TMD, may include the inability to fully open the mouth, noises that the jaw makes, but other weird symptoms that you may not contribute to TMJ problems. And that includes ear aches, ear ringing or tinnitus, headaches, dizziness, difficulty swallowing. Um, I would say a lot of the referrals I get for jaw issues come from ear doctors. Um, pe people go to the ear doctor, they think they have something wrong with their ear because there's pressure in their ear or their ear is ringing. Um, and the ear doctor says, there's nothing wrong with your ear. So the jaw is, is the culprit in that sense. How do we classify TMD problems? Um, a lot of times it's a combination of, of, of all of these things. But um, issues with the joint itself and the tissues surrounding the joint um, can be one classification. Issues with the disc, the intraarticular disc, and that is the cushion that sits in there. Um, certainly, uh, the disc itself is a very highly innervated by nerves, which means um, it, it is something that we're very sensitive to. And the disc itself, because of the natural motion of the jaw, has to be able to freely move with the mandible. So when we go through those two phases of opening, rolling, translation, rolling, translation, that takes this mandible condyle here and actually moves it forward on the temporal bone. And if we didn't have that articular disc, um, there wouldn't be any cushion between those two bones. And so the articular disc actually has to stretch forward when that happens, and that's what should happen. Um, issues with that are, are, are problematic for, for TMD. Um, also included in this, muscle issues, and I wanted to throw in there issues with breathing. Breathing something we're doing constantly. If it's dysfunctional, and the habits we use to get air into our lungs are dysfunctional. That can also contribute to problems with the way we use our jaw. And so one of the main things we have to do in physical therapy is um, to really pick apart the root cause here. What does TMD, TMD feel like? Uh, the most common and probably um, simplest symptom that you can have with TMD, TMD is jaw pain or jaw clicking. That's really easy. Um, the inability of the mouth to fully open or fully close or shift side to side. I said earlier that clicking or popping, grinding, those sounds, those are not normal. Those should not happen with the jaw. Other weird symptoms, like I said earlier, headaches, neck or facial pain, dizziness, ear symptoms, um, difficulty with speaking or swallowing um, and, or, and or anxiety. anxiety. And, and the reason for that is this jaw, these, these TMJ uh, joints are right in your face. They're constantly 
uh, giving you feedback, if there's a problem with them, it's oftentimes difficult to take your attention away from that. Some causes of TMD, um, trauma, a lengthy dental procedure where your mouth is open for a long time, especially if there's underlying mechanical issues with that. Um, but that can also include a blow to the face or a medical vehicle accident or micro trauma, consistent clenching or consistent poor habits with the jaw, muscle tightness due to stress or breathing problems, postural habits, um, malocclusion. And again, we have to work really closely with, with dentists in this case to figure out is the teeth malalignment uh, a teeth issue? Is it a jaw issue? Is it a neck issue? Um, is it a mix of all of the above? So these are things that are important to work, work together, interdisciplinary. Um, surgery, um, those who have had surgery to their face or their jaw can lead to TMD. Um, displacement of the disc is a really common one. One common issue with the disc is, I said earlier, it's a cushion between the mandible and the temporal bone. Um, and it moves, it has to move forward and backward. If the disc naturally is not sitting where it should to, uh, to cushion the, the space between the mandible and the temporal bone, um, a lot of times what happens when we go through that process of translating, of rolling and translating, is the disc gets forced back into its normal position. And that's often what the clicking you hear is when you open. And then as you close, the jaw gets forced into a bad position again. So if there's an opening and closing click, the disc is likely what you're hearing with that. Um, arthritic changes or, or osteoarthritis, the jaw is relatively um, resistant to repetitive use injuries, um, especially under normal mechanical circumstances. However, it can break down when the mechanics are not correct. How is TMD diagnosed? Um, well, we take a, we take a detailed history. Um, we talk to you for a while. We figure out um, from your end what your experience has been. Then we take a really dive deep dive into the movement of your head, your neck, and your jaw, as well as examining your posture, your breathing pat patterns, and other habits you might have that are contributing to your condition. We then determine if your cause is specific to joint, muscle, breathing, disc, or a combination of all of those things. Um, if we suspect that there's a teeth alignment issue, the dentist is the first person to know or an orthodontist. Um, I don't make night splints. Dentists uh, do that. And so that's a really useful, often a really useful adjunct to mechanical treatment of the jaw as well. Um, one of the things that, well, several of the things that we can use to treat TMD problems um, is a really um, a multidisciplinary approach to fixing the issue. And that includes educating you to what's happening, um, educating you on your proper, on proper posture and body mechanics, educating you on the tongue resting position. If you remember earlier, when you're at rest, you're not chewing, you're not talking, your tongue should be stuck to the roof of your mouth. Um, and your teeth should be apart. Eating a soft diet when appropriate, um, proper exercises, and um, these are all things, multi, multi, multidisciplinary things that we can use to, um, to educate you on, on your problem. Um, being manual therapy certified, that's a big component of what I do as well. So uh, isolating and assessing the soft tissues and the way the joint moves, um, those are things that are a big component of, of, of how I treat this problem, as well as um, introducing exercises that can be specific and targeted to the specific problem that the person has. And that may include exercises for the jaw itself, that may include exercises um, for the neck. And last, lastly, stress management. Um, there's various ways to, that the physical therapist can teach you how to manage stress and offer psychological support. However, a referral to a psychologist or a, another healthcare provider certainly and not out of the question um, in some cases. Can TMD be prevented? Um, 
Yes, you, you can prevent TMD by maintaining good posture, by managing stress, uh, addressing muscle tightness, and, and paying attention to your everyday oral habits. Um, and that includes how you sit, stand, walk, the things that you do to your jaw when you're not paying attention, when you're not focused or conscious about what your jaw is doing. Um, and so um, some of the exercises that we use to treat TMD problems can also be used in a preventative way as well. So general tips, if you have TMD uh, or you don't want to get it, maintaining proper posture for the activity that you're doing. Now, one thing I want to say about that is um, there really isn't one position you should be in all the time. Our body needs variety. Uh, our neck and our jaw need variety. And so sitting at a computer for eight hours being in this position isn't necessarily any better than sitting at a computer for eight hours being in this position. So variety is important. Movement is important. Um, generally speaking, if you're going to be in a position for a long period of time, you don't want to be at either of those extremes. So good idea would be if you let your feet rest flat on the floor and you rotate your pelvis all the way up and all the way down. Go all the way up again and then go halfway back. Halfway back is right in the middle. The middle tends to be where we're comfortable. If we take the head and go forward, and all the way back and then let it come back to the center again right in the middle that's where we're going to be comfortable for long extended periods of time um, tongue position that's really important keeping your tongue uh, stuck to the roof of your mouth with your lips closed and your teeth apart now with your lips closed that that requires you to, to normally breathe through your nose so nasal breathing is a really important um, component to treating and preventing TMD, TMD issues. Um, if you have TMD, you may need to modify your diet for, for a short period of time. That includes chewing soft foods, maybe avoiding tough meat, chewy foods like gum candies or things that are really crunchy. Um, avoid opening your jaw too wide during activities like yawning. So if you go to yawn, and your jaw is taken and, and almost stressed to an excessive, excessive um, mobility that can create some sort of microtrauma to the jaw as well and avoiding smoking and maintaining good oral hygiene so what to do now so if you have tmd or if you know someone who does send this video to them um, see if they fit this category if you have issues and you're in upstate new york give us a call at 518-289-5242 um, or feel free to email me andrew at capital area pt.com we have locations scattered throughout um, the capital region of New York. Um, so I welcome your questions and here's some resources for you. And remember, you don't have to live with TMD. Um, there's treatment options out there and there's things that you can do to help. So I hope this was helpful and I look forward to your questions.